And Quattro was the company that you sold to Apple. Apple. And that was a lightning bolt because that was less than three years. And Steve literally called me up and said, you know, I didn't even believe it was him when he called. But got How does that money. conversation happen? When you say Steve called me up. Oh, uh, it was crazy. Um, We've clarified Steve Jobs, right? <laughs> Steve Jobs. <laughs> The only Steve. The only Steve. The SJ. So there's a couple um, of Steves out there, but there's only one Steve Jobs. There is only one. He, um, I don't know how he got my number, but uh, myself and my co-founders of the company went to England to watch a Patriots game because you know how they do the play the game in London every year type of thing. So we we're at Wembley Stadium and we had literally been drinking all day and watching the Patriots play football and trying to explain to a bunch of Brits like how this thing worked. And we were walking back and my phone rang and I picked it up and I'm like, what's this number? It's like California. My two co-founders co -founders kept walking and I picked up the call and they're like, oh, this is a uh, corp dev from Apple. Uh, could you hold for Steve Jobs? And I was like, whatever, I hung up. <laughs> I was like, I, I don't believe this. What? And I, I, yeah, I mean, like, why? Like, Steve Jobs didn't call. I thought it was someone, you know, pranking me or some, you know, someone of our, you know, the guys back home who are jealous they didn't come in our little, you know, man case. So you room. hung up on Steve Jobs when I you wanted to buy your company. I hung up on Dev first. <laughs> and then they called back and, and I listened for a minute and I hung up again. And I was like, dude, leave me alone. I'm on vacation. Who is this? And then they called back again and I was like, okay. And it was a, a guy named Adrian Pareka who is, he was his first like month on the job and he was the new head of corporate development <laughs> for Apple, you know, who everybody and their mother tries to kiss his ass because they all want, you know, him to buy his company. He's a wonderful guy. And he's like, hey, hey, don't hang up. Here's the story. I'm not gonna put you on the phone with Steve Jobs. Steve's back at work. Uh, and I was not a Steve Jobs fanboy. I know, I mean, I mean Ishwar, my co-founder was insane fanboy, like just cried when he realized that he actually called us. And I didn't, I mean, I, of course I knew who Steve Jobs was, but I didn't study his life, his career. You know, I didn't even have an iPhone. I didn't, I had a Blackberry, I had a rim. And um, he said, look, we're really interested in buying your company. Steve's picked you out. He wants to buy you. Can you come here tomorrow and pitch the company? And I was like, no, I was like, I'm in London. He's like, so I was like, no. And I knew we needed time to prepare. You know, we, you can't just walk into yeah. Steve Jobs unprepared. Yeah. I was like, can you give me a week? And they're like, oh, really? Most people just come right away. And I was like, I need a week. And they're like, okay, I'll see you in a week. Like this then, guy's hung up on me twice and is yeah, asking for right. a week. They're like, really playing hard to get here. I actually wonder like if that. like super famous people like have that problem a lot. You'd be like, oh, I'm sure. it's the rock calling. And you'd be like, yeah, <laughs> all right, mate. Don't know what you're trying to sell me, but I'm out of here. And you're just trying to, exactly. just trying to have a chat with someone, you know, you're just trying to talk and they just keep hanging up on you. I'll tell you something. They liked the fact that I was a little hard to get because they knew that this person was going to report to Steve if they did it. And they only wanted me to come. Uh, and I'll tell you the story of coming there because it's a great story. But for hours and hours and hours, we didn't get to meet Steve. All we got to meet was everybody else who had decided that they wanted us to work. And they just would grill me on. Here's the story. When Steve stares at you, stare back. Don't fill your don't don't fill it up with nonsense, you know, because he does this crazy thing I'll tell you about, you know, and you have to look like you you care, but you don't care too much. And you have to look like you can take a lot of shit because Steve gives everybody shit. You have to look like somebody who's not going to sit there and cry. I want to go back to Boston. And I was like, oh, OK, so this was a good start. So I like, oh, my God. So I start running after the guys and I'm like, hey, dude, guess what? You're not going to believe this. First of all, please believe me because I don't want to go through this. No, you know, please. <laughs> but Steve Jobs just called and they're interested in buying Qu in Quancho. And they're like, yeah, fuck you. Now I'm like, no. And it took an hour. It took, I kept saying, I was like, what do I have to do? I don't know. I, I, I'll i tell you my deepest, darkest secret. And I told them some secret. They're like, I think Andy's serious. I'm like, I'm totally serious. And then we stayed up all night. Like, what are we going to do? And we came home early, got everyone together, created all these uh, keynotes, not PowerPoints, of course, which was a total waste of time because Steve was never going to look at everything. We were prepared, ready to go. They only wanted to meet me and Ishwar. Ishwar was my, is a genius tech guy who, you know, co-founder uh, who, who created all the technology and, and me, and we flew out there. We spent the whole day getting prepared. And each was like, oh, we're at Apple. We're at the mothership. Did you know that first it was originally called this? And then this guy was, this guy got, got bought out for $4,000. I was like, oh, dude, don't, don't, just don't fanboy Steve Jobs. We're supposed to, you know, look him in the eye and not fanboy him and look like we belong at this table. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay. So we go in there and we sit down and we're waiting and we're waiting. And Steve's really sick. Like he had just come back. 
And, you know, my images of Steve was a strong, you know, he was a big guy and he was an athlete and he'd rollerblade around town and never wear shoes. And, you know, he, uh, all these pictures of him as a picture of health. And he finally walks in and my heart sank. I mean, he probably weighed 110 pounds and he had this green concoction and he looked horrible and he looked right at you. He goes, hello, I'm Steve Jobs. And I was like, Oh, I probably shouldn't touch him, right? Because, you know, he's not well and I don't want to hang. I was like, oh, uh, hi, I, I, I'm Andy. You know, and, you know, pointing to Ishwar. And Ishwar was like, uh, I was like, then this is Ishwar. And I look at him, I'm like, dude, you got to be fucking kidding me. You, we, we haven't even said a word yet. You can't open your mouth. Like, this is, you are never at a loss for words. So I was like kicking him under the table. And he's like, oh, okay, great. He's like, you know, why don't we all just like spend some time here? So let's put our phones off and put them on the table. And I was like, okay, because I didn't own a BlackBerry. And I was literally getting on the plane and the, the chairman of our board, I did on an iPhone, right? I had a BlackBerry. Chairman of the board goes, uh, dude, Andy, are you going with your BlackBerry? I was like, yeah. He's like, oh, you got to get, you got to go buy an iPhone. You got to, there's no way you can walk into Apple with it. You're going to look like an asshole. And I was like, I don't have one. My flight leaves an hour. He's like, I'm 40 minutes from the airport. Meet me outside. Meet me and I will give you my phone. And he gave me his phone right before I like, I literally had this random phone, you know? And, um, we go and we sit down and we start talking and he doesn't want to talk to me. He wants to talk to Ishwar first. I was like, okay. And he says, so your ads work on all different platforms, right? And Ishwar was like, yes, they do. They work on BlackBerry and we work on Android and we work on uh, well, Android, but you know, and we can tell what's happening and we get data. And he's like, how do you do that? How do you make a beautiful ad work on a shitty, you know, BlackBerry phone? <laughs> and um, he was like, well, you know, you, we kind of dumb it down. And he's like, how would you work at Apple? He's like, well, we could dumb it down, you know, to like the lowest common denominator, not totally the lowest common, it can work on all platforms. And Steve looks at me, he's looking straight at me and he puts his hand like right in Ishwar's face. He's like, I'm not talking to him again today. Okay. And I was like, okay. And he's like, I've done everything in my life to be anything but the lowest common denominator. And you have the fucking nerve to come in here and tell me that you want me to buy your company and you're going to create a product that an Apple product. That's the lowest common denominator. Do you know who you're talking to? Do you know what we've done here? And he was like, Oh, I, <laughs> quiet. I feel like nervous for you. Oh, you should be. I, uh, dude, I, 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 I don't know if there's any 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 crueler shutdown than if imagine like a guy who's like your role model just points at you and goes, I, I am not talking to you ever again. Don't even look at me. You, Didn't what have you got to say? Yeah. Didn't even look at him. He was I, I was like, okay. And then he was like, Well, I didn't be lowest comer. He was like, No, no, no more from you. Let's talk to Andy. So we talked and I'm looking at each I'm like, this is my moment in life. This is it. I am like putting for dough as they say right this if i don't pull this off it's not going to happen but if i pull it off this is uh, this is the greatest you know apple is the greatest company in the world hmm. and we talked for a long time and i was un i mean i'm a pretty nervous guy i was unbelievably calm i just it just w swept over me and i was like thinking of my kids and i was super coherent and we were locked in and we had a great conversation and he's like okay show me a demo and i said okay Ishwar is going to show you the demo. And he's like, uh, okay, fine. And Ishwar looks at me. He's like, I was like, go, go show him the demos. And he's like, but it's on a phone, right? So he had to get up and go and stand next to Steve and show him the demo. And he's like, I, I guess you don't, uh, you don't want to touch my phone because, you know, a jerk. And I was like, Ishwar, just show him the demo. So he goes and he starts showing the demo like this, right? I wish I could get close. He's like this. And Steve's like, I, I can't see. Could you? You can get closer. It's okay. I'm not going to die on you. And Ishwar's like going like this. And, and Steve's like, I, I can't see the screen. You're in the way of the screen. And so Ishwar's like, oh, uh, uh, and he goes, just move your fucking fat fingers already. And he just grabs the phone from him. And Ishwar's <laughs> like, oh, oh, that was it. That was it. He goes back to sitting down for another like two hours of crying. It's like, it's just like, it, it, I can just imagine Steve being like, Ishwar, go sit in the corner and don't turn <laughs> around until we're done here. Basically, and Ishra was like, I, I love you, man. He's, he goes, and says, just do this. I love you. I was like, okay. And so we talked for a long time. And Steve looks at me and he says, um, and the CFO of Apple's there. And I knew I had it. I knew we were good because he looked at me and goes, do you have any, do you have any kids? 
And I said, I do. And, I, and he says, oh, your, your oldest son, does he have some disabilities or something? And I said, yeah, kind of. And he's like, well, tell me about that. He's like, you know, uh, I have this new thing called the iPad that's coming out. And I don't know, we've been testing it and it seems to be unbelievably, you know, resourceful. I mean, an unbelievable tool for kids with disabilities and autism. And I was like, oh, OK. So I was like, he's trying to be human with me, but he's not a guy. There's no niceties. There's no like, oh, you like the Red Sox? There's nothing. Right. And there's no joking around. And he's under the clock, right? He knows his time is short and he's going to work fast. And so he, I said, yeah, I said, do you have any kids? Like I should have known, of course he has kids. And he's like, yeah. And he got super sad. And he was like, yeah, I do. I have a son. Uh, he's applying to college. Uh, he wants to go to Stanford, but I, I, I don't know if he's going to get in. And I'm like, of course he's going to get in. You gave the commencement speech at Stanford. <laughs> like, your kids, your kids, yeah, you know, and, and, and the irony is I ended up buying a house. I live a block away from the jobs and, and his house. I didn't even know it. But uh, I felt like, okay, he's asking about my family. I'm talking about his family. We're connecting. Each where hasn't said a word. Here we go. And he looks at me. He goes, okay, uh, Peter, who's the CFO, how much am I buying Andy's shitty little company for? And uh, he says, well, we've agreed on uh, $315 million. And I was like, that's right, 300, 315 million. And uh, bargain for you. you know, I'm trying to make a joke with him. And he's like, yeah, I'm not paying that. I'm like, uh, what now? I'm like, he's like, yeah, I'm not doing that. Your company's not worth that. I was like, well, we had a deal. This is why I'm out here. He's like, I don't, I, you don't have a deal. I say we have a deal. Did I authorize <laughs> you, Peter, to, to sell, to, to, to buy, to spend $315 million in a shitty company from Boston? He's giving me the dumb Boston accent. He's like, you know what's in Boston? Uh, I was like, well, we're actually in Waltham. He says, oh, Waltham's this you know, tech center. I was, and he goes, I know what Waltham is. I said, oh, it's actually pronounced Waltham. He's like, Waltham, Massachusetts. You know what's in Waltham, Massachusetts? Nothing. Zero. Everything you need in the world is right here in Cupertino. And if you're not here, you're nowhere. And that's why I'm not paying $315 million for your company. So now I'm thinking, and Ishwar is like crying. He's like, don't fuck this up. Take, take, take lower. And I'm like, ah. And, and I'm like, is this a test? Like, cause I'm the business. I'm not the tech guy, right? He's like, is he testing me to see if I'm going to fold and be like, well, what'd you have in mind? You know, is this has got to be a test. So I'm like, well, um, my board would be, you know, is not going to go for that. He's like, I don't give a shit about your sticky little board. Right. He's like, um, this isn't yeah. a test. He's like, I I'm not paying that amount of money. And he was like, I said, well, what did you have in mind? And he's like, how about 275? And I said, are you retrading the deal? I don't know if you know the term retrading, but it's not a good term. It's basically, you know, you get Going a deal. And that, the word, yeah. You're trying to renegotiate something you've already agreed to. People don't like that word. I didn't really know what the word meant. <laughs> I just knew the word. And he's like, are you calling me a retrader? And I was like, um, but I, I, I said, I, I'm not too familiar with the word. I'll take it back. But I, <laughs> thought, we had a, I thought we had a deal. And he's like, look, man, I don't have enough time. Look at me. I don't have time here to do this. I'll give you 275 for a shitty company. Oh, and by the way, and this was the killer line, you can go back and tell your board in Boston, excuse me, Waltham, that, oops, Andy's little ads don't work on the iPhone anymore. And then, well, then what is your fucking company worth? I was oh, like, oh, wow. I love that. Okay. Yeah. What a flex. And here's my <laughs> guess. The, the whatever that math is 30 40 million dollars to him was interest for the day on apple's billions of dollars in the bank right he probably didn't even care he wanted he's probably one of these guys who wanted to win at everything he did and also see how i did so he looks at me and goes can you land this plane and i go aye, aye captain and he goes you mixed metaphors there <laughs> i never <laughs> forgot it i was like right yeah i should have gone back to my my maritime law training with my vessel or whatever i was like uh yeah i can land this plane he's like go back to your little board and you got 24 hours and we'll get a deal done and i said okay uh, here's another thing and i was really smart and it didn't work and i'll just, i'll give you some math on it at the time apple stock was at like 130 something that is before it split already 10 for one or whatever. Yeah. I said, how about you pay me that 275 in Apple stock? And he was like, how about no, no chance. I was like, okay. He's like, I'm going to give it to you all cash though. But because you were ballsy enough to ask, no strings attached. You know, a lot of deals when you get bought, they'll pay you some money up front and then there's yeah. an earn out or you have to stay yeah, for yeah, a yeah. number of years. Yeah, wow. And he, and he was like, shake my hand. And I was like, really? He was like, stuck his hand. I was like, shake my hand and tell me you're going to work, you know, work for me for a couple of years. That's all. And everyone can get paid now and uh, make sure you just bring all the good people and leave the bozos back in Boston. And I was wow. like, okay. And uh, every year, like on the anniversary, which was about a month ago, the uh, uh, founders of me, we get together and we do the math of what that 
275 million would have been worth in Apple stock. And right now we figured it's about 4 billion. Four billion. Yeah, yeah. 2020 hindsight sucks, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Well, he didn't offer it. Yeah. And how's how's your how was your co-founder after that day? Did you guys like celebrate and go get a drink? Did he need to like decompress for two weeks and get a we, therapist? He didn't <laughs> say a word. We get back in the rental car and we start. He hadn't said a word. I was like, "You you you good, Ishwar?" And he's like, "Pull over, please." And he gives me the biggest hug I've ever had in my life. He's like. I didn't think you, I, honestly, Andy, I love you like a brother. We've been through the war, but I didn't think you had that in you. And I'm like, I didn't either, man. I don't know where it came from, but that was like the best performance of my life. And he's like, thank God, man. <laughs> it's just like, let's just get this thing yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, really. yeah. It was awesome. And so then beyond that, you then obviously worked under Steve for a couple of years. Yeah. Just sort of as much as you can summarize what I'm sure was a huge experience in your life. Like, what was that like? What was it like learning from him? What What are the leadership lessons you take from him or or don't take from him? Yeah, it was terrifying. Not going to lie. I mean, I loved it, but I hated it. I was a jerk. He was a very hard guy to work for, but it was it was terrifying and incredibly stressful. And we would get there and they had never really bought a company of our size before, believe it or not, because Apple was, a you know, in, not everything was in-house, not in-house. Like they wouldn't work with ex outside groups. Everything was in Cupertino pretty much in Paris. Mm -hmm. But um, and all of a sudden here's, you know, I had 120 people and we're coming a bunch of us and a bunch of us are coming for six months before the fall because a lot of people had kids in school and they had to move and they didn't even have an office for us. I was literally in a lockdown room, which is a blackout room with curtains and picnic tables where they, you know, the secret stuff is. And I sat in a picnic table for six months and uh, it was tough. And I met with Steve every Tuesday for a long time, but never alone because he would never meet alone. And it was half of the executive staff there and it was my meeting and I hated every minute of it. I hated every minute of preparing for that meeting. It was a lot of reasons why I didn't like to be a lawyer because I was so paranoid and I didn't feel like I knew what I was talking about and I over prepare. But with Steve, you had to simplify everything down to its core. And the biggest lesson is the most obvious one for Apple, like their products, their mantra, the way they talk, the way they get things done is just the word simplify. If you go outside of the Marcom building, there's a little like installation and, it, and it's a, someone, some artist made it. It says simplify, crossed out, simplify, crossed out, simplify. And that's it. And that's the way they work. Like Steve, there's no focus groups. There's no research. There's nothing. There's a bunch of guys that meet every Monday for senior staff. Tim Cook probably still does the same thing. And they talk. And Steve allows you into his room, his conference room. It starts at like 8 in the morning and ends like, when, like a Springsteen concert, whenever he's done with it. And you have to be, he has to trust you that you're bringing the most boiled down, accurate, truthful information. And he doesn't suffer fools. And if you don't, you're out. He'll kick you out of the room like a child or he'll just fire you. And there's a reason why this company is the greatest company on earth. And if you look at the executive staff, they've, I think like the, 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 the newest guy has been there for 15 years. You know, they've been there for 15, 20, 30 years through mm. all these changes of computer, you know, computer processing and, and the internet and everything. And they're still on top. And uh, I learned to, he would always say, Andy, you're a very complicated man, which which wasn't a compliment, right? It was just like, you use 10 words when you could use one words. You try and show me keynotes when you're trying to frame my thoughts. I don't want to see your pictures. I don't want to read your words, right? Just boil this down and tell me what you're thinking and think like an Apple person, right? I, 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 I worry about you because I bought you. I didn't hire you and I need to train you. And then you need to go train all your guys because Steve is the greatest multitasker in the world because he was the world's greatest salesman. He was amazing with design, amazing with numbers. He could do everything, right? And if you do that, you have to be able to take in information from others. Others can't give you crap and then you have to synthesize it. And that mm -hmm. was my problem. I would work with my guys every week and then, and they would be like, get this. And they kept saying, well, just tell Steve, just tell Steve, just tell Steve. And I said, I blew up in front of 20 people. I was like, if anyone ever says, just tell Steve to me again, I'm going to fire them. Why don't you fucking tell Steve? Because it's terrifying to just tell Steve. It doesn't work that way. You need to think through every angle of what you're saying. And if he finds out that you're fudging it or you're lying or you don't know what you're bullshitting yourself, you're all gone. And I'm the first one to go. And But when I was in there with him and everybody else, I was like, I am here with leaders of the free world, man. This is amazing. And then after I left, I was like, shoot, I have six hours, six days and four hours left for the next one. I got to prepare. Wow. How, 
How is that balanced? Because the way you talk about it, it's like there was clearly this desire from you and all the people around him to want to impress him. Like you wanted to do a good job, but you were also seemingly partially terrified of him. Like how, how did that tension work or how do you feel like he had so much loyalty when he perhaps uh, wasn't an easy person to work no, with? Because he created the pirate culture, the pirate flag, you know, the Mac pirate flag and everybody, he hated that, but he kind of liked it because he knew every day, thousands of times a day, someone would say WWSD, what would Steve do here? And every little detail. You know, like there's the bookstore and mm. there's the bookstore app in this, right? And if you look at it, what, what, there's a bookshelf and it's a semi, it's a wood grain bookshelf. Well, I know the story, like some dude brought him a hundred different grains of wood till he decided which one was the right one to copy for the digital version of that bookshelf because every detail mattered. And you had to think like that or you were gone. And if you did and you survived, then you felt like my shit doesn't stink. I am, I am the... F- I am amazing. These are amazing people. We can do absolutely anything. He he made that happen. You would go in and he'd say, he didn't want to talk usually to the VP or the person who was in charge. He'd want to talk to the person who made it. He wanted to talk to the graphics designer, the engineer, the person who came up with it. And so you would have to bring your lower level people in there and they'd be terrified because if Steve hated them, he'd probably get fired. But if Steve liked them, they'd be like, you're amazing. How long would this take to make into a product? And you'd say, if we really hustled, maybe eight months. And he'd say, I want to do this. And the guy would be like, Oh my God, my idol just said he wants to do my product. I'll give you eight weeks. And you'd be, uh, I can't do this in eight months, in eight weeks. You have eight, you have eight weeks. Goodbye. And then you'd go back and you'd ring the bell and every single person in the group would come and sit down. You'd be like, we have eight weeks. If we all stay over for eight straight weeks and we do this in shifts and we have this room, like, how do we do this? And it became a game, you know, like you just were amazed at what you could accomplish. Apple keeps doing it. And do you wow. do you think he was right with that mantra and that like mentality of simplify? There's like, a lot think... of burnout. Oh, yeah. simplify for sure, for sure. Yeah. Like, what's the what's the first thing you noticed when you got an iPad? You could you you were old enough to appreciate the iPad yeah. when it came out, right? What was the first thing you noticed when you looked in that box? What was missing from that box? A keyboard. Directions. No di- <laughs> keyboard. No. Directions. There was no. Yeah. Have you ever bought a thousand dollar product without a piece of paper in there that said anything about even? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. It was so intuitive that a three-year-old could pick it up and plow through it. And that's once you felt like I'm part of this revolution, you wanted to do anything to stay there. And it was hard to get a job there. And they paid great and they took great care of you. And they just, they made you feel like a superhero. Now you gave your life to him. And, and a lot of people couldn't deal with that. And um, also he, he was ruthless, you know, and would either cut you or not. Uh, but he created a, a business where he hated the fact that there was a hundred thousand people working there. Cause he tried to run it like a 30 person startup and anybody, uh, as jobs at apple.com, he would respond to your email. He would call you up. He would get on fights with people who sent them notif- notice, you know, emails about why'd you move this button over here? Cause that's just the guy he was. Insane what do you feel like, people. what do you feel like? from working with Steve that you've developed into your own leadership style now? So, um, you know, for my leadership skills, it was definitely a sense of urgency. You know, I'm also from Boston and it's kind of a cliche, but we're like hard charging and I'm out here in California and everyone's like, Hey, you know, a little more mellow, but I'm not, uh, fierce loyalty. He's, he was insanely loyal so much about simplification. Like I'm the best multitasker I know, and that kills me because other people aren't. And I'm like, come on, you know, so I'm a bit impatient, but, um, and, and definitely, you know, fell fast, which is not his, that's uh, Mark Zuckerberg, but it's big. And it's the mantra out here in the Valley where I don't know, like in the startup scene in Sydney or in Boston, it was a, it was a badge of dishonor to start a company and fail. It's like, Oh, oh yeah. you're the guy who took the money and you're the one who lost it all here. It's like, Oh, I've, I've had three startups. I did this. I did this. I did the first one. was the, the second one. I got this big the third one. We, we partnered with these and people are like, Oh, look at all the experience you have as opposed to, Oh, you're a three time loser. So it's do something. If it works, keep doing 
doing it and grow, always grow. Steve is an unbelievable listener. Um, you know, like he had his opinions, right? And he didn't care about anybody else's, but he listened to everybody. And the mere fact that they were able to grow and grow and change and evolve and go from a, you know, a piece, a computer, a, 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 a computer company to a music company to a phone company to, you know, an internet company to a media company is miraculous. All, yeah. all, all with maintaining and then becoming the most valuable company in the world.